Well, Archansky, thanks for coming, and I'm looking forward to talking to you about your book, Game Changers on North Carolina Book Watch, sometime very soon. Uh, your book is about uh, Dean Smith, Charlie Scott, and a Southern College town, Chapel Hill. Uh, you've got a story about that shows us in terrible graphic description what Chapel Hill was like in the 1960s before Charlie Scott came. Right, and it's a good thing that Charlie uh, didn't come earlier because uh, it would have been tougher than it even was, but on December 28, 1963, in, during the day, the all-white Carolina football team was beating Air Force in the Gator Bowl. And that night, the most violent episode in the civil rights movement took place in Chapel Hill when the protesters went to this uh, convenience store down on Lower East Franklin Street called the Rock Pile. And they went in, they ordered, and they were refused, and they sat down on the floor. And instead of the owner, Carlton Mize, calling the police and having them arrested for trespassing, he locked the front door, locked the back door, went and got a couple of jugs of bleach and walked among the protesters, spilling the bleach all over them and burning some of them very severely. And when the police did get there, because they were always warned where, where the protesters were going and what time to show up so you know, the police could stop any violence, the police got there a little late and they had to take uh, the burnt kids to the hospital to have be treated. And then they were charged with trespassing and they were sent to jail. So they got uh, burned twice. That was and, and, <laughs> once figuratively and once literally. Yeah, right? and what, so what? So what? Uh, this was going on all over the South, wasn't it? I mean, the, the, so was uh, Chapel Hill different? Well, people think it was, and I, my point they is, think that it's more liberal. But you're trying to say, look, look what went on. No, and, it was it was as old South as any any uh, any place in in the country in those days of the early '60s. That's why Chapel Hill had so many, almost. Two and a half years, uh, protest almost every single day, a march, an incident almost every single day. And it was W.D. Blake, the, the police chief, who was a disciple of uh, King and Gandhi, who believed in peaceful protest, who really kept the lid on it and kept it from getting really, really violent. Well, now, the subtitle of your book is The Era That Transformed a Southern College Town. How, how did the era transform Chapel Hill from, well, from the way you described it to uh, more of the reputation it has? Well, because there was, there was a liberal faction in the faculty and there was a liberal faction in town and, and they forced it and they wanted a public accommodations ordinance. So the 20, the, the 30 businesses that were closed and the 19 restaurants that were closed would open their doors to everybody. And it, the one time it went to, in front of the Board of Aldermen, it was uh, tabled for more discussion. And so it really didn't change until 1964 when the Civil Rights Act passed and the businesses had to open up and from that point, Gradually, the town changed, and the racism was stuffed more into people's minds and, and hearts than it was openly, like it was when the town really was segregated. Did, um, did you, do you argue that Smith and Charlie Scott had a role in that change? I think they did. Um, I think they did because uh, Charlie Scott was a hero on the basketball court, and that had people you know, maybe looking, uh, looking at racism differently, but I also think that um, they didn't uh, really care. I mean, they cheered Charlie as a basketball player and they carried on the people who were born into the South as segregationists. You just don't change that mindset overnight. Well, your book deals with this in great detail. It's a, uh, your book is called Game Changer and the book itself is a game changer in terms of our looking at, at those historic times. Thanks for that book, and thanks for agreeing to come talk to me about it on North Carolina Book Watch. Thanks, DG. Always a pleasure.